Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. In the early days of filming wildlife, as you'll see tonight, researchers had to capture animals in order to observe and learn from them. But that's no longer the case today. Modern technologies such as drones and satellite tracking offer new ways to study animals in their natural habitat with less intrusion from human touch. Wild Kingdom set the gold standard for nature programming and introduced generations of young people to the wonders of the natural world. Fortunately, the successful research that began with our original series helped many animals make a comeback from the threat of extinction. And that's good news for the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. A simple arrow like this is very important in helping a primitive people survive. For centuries, the Kalahari Bushmen of Africa have hunted with such arrows. They were successful because the tips were poisoned and they were able to get very close to their game in a unique manner before shooting. Recently, we adapted these ancient hunting techniques to modern use when Tom Allen and I helped capture a young, large male eland for a zoo in Europe for breeding purposes. A primitive bow is a short-range weapon. So to get close enough to shoot, the Bushmen disguise themselves as an animal, which will not frighten the eland. They know an eland will not run when approached by a giraffe, a zebra, or an ostrich. So their disguise must be one of these animals. Tom and I quickly discovered the simple effectiveness of the centuries-old stalking technique when here in the Kalahari Desert of Southwest Africa, we stepped backward in time and became engaged in one of the strangest and most fascinating projects we've ever encountered. A project we call Experiment of the Bushman. This Kalahari Desert's a hostile place of 200,000 square miles. But in these brushy fringe areas of Southwest Africa, many wild animals live. Trapper Wolfgang Delfs knows just where they congregate. Zebras are abundant and frequently visit the isolated water holes, often in association with eland. <laughs> That magnificent animal, the greater kudu, also often comes here. Next to the eland, he's the second largest African antelope. Wolfgang doesn't see any eland here at the moment, and we're not interested in capturing any of the kudus or smaller antelope that have come to drink. Sharing the same observation post, a glossy starling and a red-billed hornbill watch the continuous procession of animals below them. The giraffe can also approach eland without alarming them. Wolfgang remarks that the big ostriches which inhabit this area will also often approach to within mere feet of eland herds in the grassy areas. Mm -hmm. 
It's a long drive to the Bushman's camp, and we'll probably see some eland along the way. This countryside seems lifeless, but by keeping a sharp watch over the dull-colored grasses as we drive, we soon spot an eland herd. They'll run if we approach any closer than this. It seems to be a healthy herd, but they're all older animals and I can't see any fine young males among them, which is what we're after. Maybe in the next herd we come across, we'll find the animal we want. Something small on the ground ahead of us. It's a striped ground squirrel. They're almost always found in pairs, so another one should be nearby. There it is, coming out of the burrow. Including that tail, they're about two and a half feet long, and they almost always stand erect to watch for enemies. Here's the camp of the Bushmen now, and it looks like they're ready for us. The ostrich disguises are bulky, but not terribly heavy, unless the wearer must walk a long way while stalking. Crude looking close up, they look surprisingly ostrich-like from a distance when the hunter walks through deep grasses. That's why the native hunters who have to get within a few short yards to shoot their poisoned arrows effectively are able to fool the eland. Both gang's native helpers are waiting at the prearranged place and he tells them to follow. All we need now is to find a good herd of Elam. The Bushman told us a good-sized Elam herd had been seen to the west a day ago, and so we headed out in that direction. <laughs> We've driven a long way without sighting any eland, but we'll almost certainly encounter some soon. When we do spot a herd, we'll find a place to hide the vehicles, and then Wolfgang and I will try to stalk them in the disguises, while Tom watches our progress through binoculars. We're entering the area where the Bushmen told us eland had been feeding. Wolfgang signals for a halt, because there's a herd ahead. There are several promising young males among them. We need one that is less than half grown, yet strong and healthy enough to be a fine breeding animal for the European zoo he'll be shipped to. They're not alarmed yet, so we'll get the vehicles hidden quickly. Immediately on alighting, Wolfgang loads the capture gun with the drug-filled hypodermic dart. Marlin and Wolfgang waste no time getting into their ostrich disguises. Hopefully, they won't have to stalk the eland too far. Although the disguises only weigh about 35 pounds each, the men are going to have to walk in a bent-over position that is very difficult to do for long periods in this desert heat.
Marlin's movements indicate that he's quite familiar with the jaunty way ostriches walk. I'll keep watch and be ready to follow with the vehicles when they've darted the eland we want. It's more strenuous than I thought it would be to move convincingly in this garb. But it's amazing how close we've gotten to the herd already, and they show no signs of alarm. Marlin and Wolfgang are a considerable distance away from me now, but they surely can't be more than a hundred feet away from the herd. The Eland are watching us closely, but still no indication of alarm. No wonder the Bushmen are successful in their hunting. We're so close, I feel I could reach out and touch one of them but Wolfgang has not yet decided which animal he wants. They seem to be getting a little nervous, so there's nothing to do but follow them. Wolfgang is nearer to the Eland herd than I and studying the animals closely for the one he wants to dart. None of these fulfills his requirements yet. They're slowing now, getting over their little burst of nervousness. Wolfgang, to be sure of placing his dart well, will wait till they stop and the one he's chosen is broadside to him. He'll probably aim his dart to strike just behind the animal's foreleg. In following the eland, we've walked over two miles from Tom, and now the animals are in good position, curious but unafraid. It looks like Wolfgang's found exactly the animal he wants. It's a good hit, and the popping of the dart gun really hasn't alarmed them too much. Marlin and Wolfgang will follow at a safe distance in their disguises. We'll come up slowly, so as not to frighten the herd. Since the drug does not take effect rapidly, we'll keep the dart at Eland in sight. We must move carefully. If we startle the herd, it might scatter. Our animal could drop unseen and be lost. We followed the Eland herd for several miles, always watching the darted male carefully for signs of the drug taking effect. Although Wolfgang and I are getting weary, our darted animal is still moving along well enough, with only an occasional faltering to indicate the drug is acting. There should be a more pronounced reaction before much longer, and by then, Tom will be here with the vehicles.
We've had to take an unexpected detour because of a ravine we couldn't cross. But now we're nearing the men in their disguises. Here's Tom now. I'm not sorry to be shedding this disguise, but I'm still considerably impressed with its effectiveness. We'll have to move right along now. The dart at Eland has begun falling behind the rest of the herd, and he can't hold out much longer. We'll return the disguises to the Bushmen with our thanks later on. Tom has located the dart at Eland again, so we'd better not get any closer to the herd yet. It wouldn't take much at this point to frighten them into a panicky run, during which the drugged animal would almost certainly fall and possibly be lost. He's trailing behind right now. Wolfgang uses the minimum effective amount of drug when collecting. An overdosed animal could sicken or die. This results in a longer follow before the animal is captured, but an animal in far better condition physically when it eventually does go down. Right now, it looks like this Eland has come about as far as he can. Still, Wolfgang is in no hurry to approach until there is no possibility of the Eland regaining its feet. When the head begins sagging, the animal has lost all control, and it's time now to move in. It looks like a fine specimen in perfect shape and probably weighs something over 600 pounds. It's important to get the dart out and give the eland an antibiotic injection to prevent the possibility of infection. The drug used in the dart does not cause unconsciousness or the lessening of any of the senses. It merely paralyzes the muscles and makes it impossible for the animal to move. It isn't essential that an antibiotic be administered, but it's a precaution Wolfgang always takes whether or not the animal will be released. In that way, the continued health of the animal is ensured, particularly if the eland, when inspected very carefully, is found to be unsatisfactory for breeding in captivity and must be released. Wolfgang determines this specimen is in excellent condition, with no sign of disease or deformity. We'll take him. Had it turned out that he was unsatisfactory, the antidote injection would have been given immediately. Very quickly, he would recover and be on his way. As it is, we'll load him into the truck and not administer the antidote until he's safely under control in a compound. We can be thankful he's a young animal and only weighs just over 600 pounds. That's considerably less than half the weight of a full-grown Elan bull. Even with the six of us working at it, the job of loading this big animal on the truck isn't simple. The trick is first to get the animal upright with his body off the ground. Once that's accomplished, the loading will be easier.
That's got it. He's in. Now we'll close the truck flaps and make sure they're well secured. One man will hold up the Elan's head to prevent any possible injury on the way back to camp over the bumpy terrain. Soon our Elan will be living a life far more important to his own species than the life he was living here on the Kalahari Desert. The Elan seemed to be in very good condition, so he was quickly taken to the compound and unloaded. There he was given a shot of the antidote which caused immediate full recovery and gave us the exact animal required for breeding purposes at the European Zoo. The strength and vigor of this eland will permit controlled establishment of a strong breeding strain of these animals. Should an epidemic strike the existing wild herd, the offspring from this animal could well help repopulate the area with a disease-free strain. Extinction of important species may be prevented because zoos around the world are now helping these African animals to retain their place as an essential part of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.